What's up traders? Before we dive into this week's market profile forecast, I wanna just give you guys a quick reminder that we are currently hosting a giveaway for two $200,000 earn to trade valuation accounts. So all you need to do to enter is just go watch the last video and I will link it in the description below here as well. Follow the five steps, leave a comment on that video and you will be automatically entered to win one of the 200K evaluation accounts. So best of luck to you. Don't forget to participate and here we go into the video. Greetings traders, Zach here from the Trading Network. I hope that you guys have had a good holiday weekend, a nice long weekend, enjoying a little bit of extra time with your friends and family. I have, as you might expect, another weekly market profile forecast for you guys. Now, the market has not opened yet, opens up in about 45 minutes, but I think the analysis and the major levels that we are going to discuss this evening are not really going to be affected too much by where we open up, unless for some crazy circumstance that we had, you know, a huge gap up or a huge gap down. But I am certainly not anticipating that, as I think people are uh, still slowly wobbling back to their desks after stuffing their faces over the holiday weekend. So with that said, uh, we're going to take a look at the ES and NQ session profiles, the weekly profiles. I'll show you guys uh, some levels that I will be looking at on the weekly and daily candlestick charts as well. And I will give you guys some good levels to uh, look at and take some good trade opportunity from if price uh, does give you some good reaction there. So uh, with that said, let us check out the NQ session profile first and foremost. You can see that we closed uh, above uh, yesterday's, or I'm sorry, Friday's POC at 11,067. So depending on where we open up, uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what kind of reaction we get to Friday's value area. Okay, so the value area is uh, from 1180 down to 1113, and we closed above the point of control from Friday, but below the value area high. So most immediately, I will be looking at the re reaction to the value area from Friday, right? That's this zone right here. If we can move and hold above 1181, first and foremost, I'll be looking at a test of 11.1K, and then very likely a move if we can get acceptance above 11.1K up to the overnight high from the 22nd into 23rd session profile file and that is at 11,143. Now acceptance above that level very likely gets us a test of this area right here. You can see that there's great confluence between several levels. So we have the POC from the 20th. We've got the overnight low from the 20th into the 21st. We've got the regular trading hour session low from the 21st at 11,181. We've got the overnight low from the 21st into 22nd at 187. And then we have Thursday's high at 11,208. So this is going to be a very, very important zone. You could create a small zone like this, or you could bring it all the way up to Thursday's high at 11.2K. And this is going to be a major line in the sand level, not only for you know tomorrow, but moving forward into the week. Because if we can move and hold back above 11.2K, we've got another very important zone that I'm looking at at 11,250. And that very likely gets us back into, or acceptance above this area, very likely gets us back into value area from Wednesday, which is between 11.3K and 11,372. So that is what I'm going to be looking at on the upside. Major line in the sand level, if you wanna pick one level, is basically going to be Friday's high at 11.1K. Acceptance above that, we're looking at tests of these levels, very, very likely. And if we get rejected uh, below a Friday's high and we move back down below the POC from Friday, I would first and foremost be looking for a test of 11,013. That's Friday's value area low. If we break that, look for a move to 10,979. That's the low from the 22nd into 23rd overnight session. And then back down to Friday's low at 10,916. And then this is where I'll be looking uh, for further downside, pretty quick downside if we do break Friday's low into 896 and then a 10. 870. So that is what I'm looking at from a session profile perspective. When it comes to the weekly chart, uh, it's it's going to be pretty similar as far as the levels go. Obviously, there's going to be larger gaps between the levels. But most immediate line in the sand from a weekly perspective on NQ, I would say, is holding this 11,275 level, right? So if we can move and hold above that, we're very likely to test uh, last week's high at 11,389. But once again, we're all the way down here at 11,67, or that's where we closed, right? So closer to the value area low. 
from last week. So if we open up and we don't get, you know, rather quick acceptance above those major levels that I was referring to on the session profile a minute ago, then I would look for a first test of 10,945. Just showing you guys one more time that there's some good confluence here. We've got 979 as the overnight low, 916, and then 896. So more granular, these are the three areas that I would be looking at if we do get rejection below that 11,000 level. Uh, but we need to take it one level at a time. That is most importantly. So... Once again, here is where we closed on Friday, right? 11,067. So you could consider this a line in the sand. You can see that we have a weekly high volume node here right around 11,050, 11,45-ish. Uh, so if we break that, I would be indeed looking for a move to that 945 level first and foremost. Acceptance above this uh, likely gets us you know, up to, at the very least, last week's POC if we do get some substantial acceptance. And you can see last week's POC lines up with the overnight high there. So we have the overnight high at 145 and we have last week's weekly point of control at 11185. So only about a 40 point difference there. And of course, we have confluence between that high volume node and that point of control there. So those are the levels that I will be paying most attention to or closest attention to moving forward into tomorrow's session. We have a short week, of course, so it's going to be very interesting to see uh, what kind of acceptance we get, if any, or if we get you know, immediate rejection and the sellers remain in control. So with that said, uh, let's pop over to the NQ weekly chart, and I will show you guys or discuss my thoughts there very briefly. So you can see very, very similar to the situation on ES that we had. We have weekly rejections of the opportunity zone. Here's the first one where we put in the lower high that was back in April, right? April, 2022. So we get our first rejection there. Then we get our next lower high and we've already confirmed our third lower high on the weekly chart with clear follow through, right? Even this bar closed below the low of this and last week's candle closed below the low of the prior week candle. So I wouldn't be surprised to see follow through, but this is a very critical area as this 10.8K level, if we violate that, I think that we're gonna see new lows. I think it's very likely that we do see new lows if we break and especially close another weekly candle below 10,800, 10,820, right? We could get wicks down there to test and probe that area, if you will. But a weekly closure below that area, or even a daily closure, to be honest, is going to be pretty spooky for the bulls. Now, with that said, as some uh, hopium for the bulls, if you will, uh, what I have been looking at and what we were discussing in the TTN community last week was that we are visiting the S2 level, that is the support 2 level. These are pre-calculated Fibonacci pivots. So this is built in in IntraTrader. I would highly suggest that you guys check out the daily, weekly, and even monthly pivots for just some good context and some important levels on a higher time frame basis. So we did get a bit of a reaction from the last couple of days, uh, Thursday and Friday, off of S2. So if we can, you know, indeed put in a daily low, which at this point is just closing a daily above 11,137, uh, then we could get a retest of this 250 level and acceptance or another closure above the top of this candle or these two candles, uh, basically at, call it 11,400, 11.4K. So we got a little ways to go. Very likely gets us a retest of uh, Fibonacci pivot PP. That is the center, the pivot point itself. So if you guys are not familiar, we have the pivot point, we have resistance one through three, and we have support one through three. And those are great levels that are used very often as targets. Uh, you can take trades off of them and you'll notice, especially on like daily pivots, for instance, and even here on a weekly pivot, the price gets kind of magnetized to these levels as they're great areas of liquidity. So let's hop back on over to the profile. Let's check out the ES session profile. You guys will uh, very, very likely see a similar pattern here as we often do on our weekly market profile forecast between ES and NQ as they are very, very highly correlated. So you can see here, we closed the week uh, right actually below the value area high from Friday at value area high was 3868.75 and we closed at 3868.25. So quite literally two ticks below value area high. So that's pretty bullish. You know, if we can move 
and hold above this 3870 level, call it. You can see we've got 72 is Friday's high, 7150 prior overnight high, uh, 3875 is Thursday's high, and then very, very similar zone that we were looking at on NQ with these prior lows. We've got the overnight point of control from the 20th into 21st at 3868.75. So this is going to be a very important area. And if we can move and hold above this, I would first and foremost be looking for a test of 3904. That is going to be a naked POC, a point of control that was established and we have not touched that level since it was established, okay? So if we can move up here, this is back into value from Wednesday. Uh, moving and holding above 3,900 very, very likely gets us a test and a close of this other naked POC up at 3,923. And that is the point of control from the December 15th session, right? So this is a very bearish session right here. We broke the lows uh, from the 14th of December. We continue to move down. We also have technically another naked POC at 3990. So if the bulls do take control, uh, that's another major area that I'd be looking at there, 3990 as well. And that is really what I am having my eye on or keeping my eye on uh, moving into the week on the upside. On the downside, if we do not get acceptance above this area, if we reject from Friday's high, Friday's value high, look for a quick move down to 3858.75. You can see the value area high from Thursday is 57.25, so there's some great confluence there as well. And then break below that, uh, very likely move down to Friday's value low at 38.46. And then rejection of this level very likely gets us a test of the overnight low from the 22nd into 23rd, which is at 38.30. And then a break below that. You guys know the deal. This is like dominoes when it comes to market profile levels. Price just will knock these levels down and move right on to the next one to test the liquidity. And that is a pattern that you guys should be seeing, especially if you've been watching a lot of my weekly market profile forecasts. So a break below 46 likely gets us a test of 38.32, 38.30-ish. And then a break below that, 38.30. 21 break below that 38 10 ish and then uh, thursday's low is a very very likely area if we can't hold 38 10. now of course we have a little stepping stone there so just as a little bit of practical you know example or a bit of a practical example if you will is a break below any of these levels you know you can short the break and retest of this say you have bearish divergence at 3821 and good oscillator structure you can short here targeting 3809 you could short 3809 targeting 3803 for a quick little scalp same thing break of 3803 very likely headed to thursday's low at 3788 and this is how i'm using these market profile levels on a session basis to give me a good trade opportunity. You know, it's not just theoretically, you know, if we break this, I'm looking for a move here. No, if we break this and we have all of our other tools lining up, that's a good short opportunity down to our next major profile level. And you can go and back test this data over and over again for days, weeks, months, even years, and see how high probability these moves happen. And that is why I am such a big fan of the market profile because it is truly a liquidity map like no other. Sure, you can use candlestick structure, but candlestick analysis is so much less clear, at least in my opinion. And uh, I think that you know, using the combination of candlestick structure, momentum oscillators, volatility oscillators, and market profile levels is truly uh, a great combination to remove a significant amount of guesswork from your trading and give you good trade opportunity every single day. So let us head on over to the ES weekly profile here. You can see once again, here's where we opened up right around 38.68. And uh, that's going to be right below the value area high from last week. So most immediately, even from a weekly profile uh, perspective, we can get acceptance above 38.73. I think that opens up a pretty nice move up to 39.20-ish. You can see there's good confluence here between last week's high and the prior week's value area low. So a move and hold above that likely gets us a move to 3950-ish, 39.54. That is the value area low and the weekly low from the week of December 5th there. And you can see that we have a nice little zone of high volume nodes. Boom, there's one, boom, there's two, and there's three, right? So that's multiple point of controls from multiple weeks lining up. You can see that right here. So if I hover my mouse across this, this is the POC from that week of December 5th. Right below that, you can see that there's a zone created right around that high volume node between the value area low of November 21st weekly profile and the POC of the same November 21st profile as well. 
So this is going to be an important zone and one that there's very likely a ton of liquidity sitting at. So if we do see the bulls take control this week, uh, obviously we've got some work to do to move above these levels, but this is really where I will be looking for a major, major test and uh, a rebase, if you will, to see if we'll, you know, for example, move up, test this area, and then move back down, or if we move up, move through this area and tap this, you know, weekly naked POC all the way up at 4,050. So same situation, I will pop on over to the candlestick chart. Let me change real quick to ES, and I will show you guys the deal here. Very, very clean, super, super good setups for uh, long-term traders, especially. You know, you can see, I mean, even if you're like holding long-term positions bullish, this first test of the weekly op zone, might not be as clear because the op zone is still green, but this second one, rejecting the opportunity zone, oscillators curling and crossing down, very, very similar candlestick structure to the first one. And then we've got our third lower high compared to the prior highs, rejecting the opportunity zone, follow through. One thing that's a bit different about the ES uh, weekly candle chart compared to NQ is that we didn't get as strong as a bearish close uh, below the low of the prior bar, right? So we did not close you know, significantly below the lows of this, uh, below 38.55. We close, let's see, we're at 38.69.75 is the exact uh, closing price for this bar right here. So that is what I will have my eye on. You can see that the fast oscillators at the very least are curling and crossing down. So once again, we could come all the way back down and test these lows around 3,600, 3,630. And as long as we don't truly close a weekly candlestick below, uh, I would say at at first, if we don't close a, or I'll say I'll say it like this, uh, a bit more cavalier way to look at it would be if we don't close a weekly low below or a weekly candle below this level right here at 36.30, then there is still hope for the bulls. And this is really the final straw right here. If we close a weekly candle below 35.35 on ES, very, very likely a move to 34.25, which is the 377 EMA on the weekly chart. Now let's pop on over to the daily. I will pull up ES as well. And you guys will see a very, very similar situation here, how we are actually retesting and uh, testing that S1 level compared to S2 that we were testing on NQ. We are one Fibonacci pivot level higher on ES, which is a bit more bullish, I will say that. And this could, you know, on the daily chart, we'd have to come all the way back down here to violate our lows. So technically, as long as we're closing and confirming higher lows above this, you know, the structure remains decent. I think the structure is a bit more bullish on ES. ES could be leading, uh, but first and foremost, you know, we have to close a solid bullish candlestick above the high of Friday, which is at 38.72, right? So if we close a, a daily bar above 38.72, that's going to confirm another daily local low, just like we had right here. This one immediately got negated with this strong bearish bar closing at 38.49, below the low of the prior bar at 38.55.50. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see once again uh, who takes control at the beginning of the week and if they can hold on to that control moving forward because we've got a lot of levels to work through. Regardless, you know, that's that's the beauty of being an intraday trader is regardless of what happens, where price goes, you know, especially, you know, these, these daily candlestick charts and the weekly charts are more of uh, mental masturbation, if you will. Shout out to Crown for that term uh, because, you know, intraday, I'm just looking at the session profiles. Obviously, I have the weekly profiles in mind. I've got them marked off. I'm paying attention to them. But, you know, the beauty of being an intraday trader is as long as we're interpreting the market information properly, as long as we have good levels to take trades at, as long as we have, you know, good setups with our other confluence factors at those major levels, we're going to have good opportunity to make money, whether, you know, price is bullish or bearish. So I think that's important to just put out there as well. So with all of that said, I'll go ahead and wrap things up here. I think that these are some great levels for you guys to mark off and work off of moving forward into the beginning of the week. Keep an eye on these critical areas, especially, you know, this uh, 3855 level, right? Uh, this is a very, very important level to hold. If we lose that, 
It could be a nice 50-point trade down to ES or just some quick scallops on the way down there, if you will. And on the NQ side of things, a very, very similar situation. Really want to see this 11,050 level hold. We can even go back down into the session profile and see that. You know, at the very least, I want to see Friday's value hold at 11,000 even-ish, technically 11,013. But uh, as long as we can hold, you know, 11K even, I think that uh, we are probably good for a retest of 11.1K. So take it one level at a time. Mark these levels up on your charts. Once again, if you guys are kind of just watching these videos for entertainment and not necessarily using uh, the, the market profile levels to your advantage, just mark them up on your chart. You know, just simply boom, 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 boom. Boom, and a watch reaction to those levels. Watch your other tools, watch your oscillators, watch your moving averages, watch your volatility oscillators if you have those. And you will very, very likely find excellent trade opportunity at or around these levels. So with all that said, once again, I wanna thank you guys as always for taking the time to watch this content. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them down in the comments below. If you guys like what you see, please also feel free to like, subscribe, and click that bell notification to be notified every single time that we post videos here on the channel. And as always, if you guys are interested in learning more about what we do in the Trading Network private community, if you guys are interested in watching me trade live Monday through Friday starting at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, check out thetradingnetwork.io where you can purchase access to our most popular offering, the Pro Trader Bundle, which includes the Fundamentals of Futures Trading course, lifetime Discord access, and access to our proprietary indicator package. You can, of course, purchase access to all of those products standalone on our website with payment plans as well. In addition to that, I also offer one-on-one -on -one trader mentorship in the form of a four-week and a 10-week program, and you can learn more about those on our website as well. Thank you guys, as always, for taking the time to watch this content. I appreciate your time very much, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.